Okay, so here we have example two in our differentiation topic. We are looking at differentiation from first principles. We're looking at how to find the derivative of a function, not by using our little shortcut rule, but actually by working it out algebraically. And for that, we have been using this formula, f dash x, f prime x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of this fraction. We've got f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So remember, this isn't some mystical formula. This is the simplified version of the gradient formula for any function. Okay, so all we need to do is to try and feed the information into this. And the limit expression at the beginning is, remember, a really important one to keep in. Because if we stick everything in at the moment, if we want h to have the value 0, that whole fraction is going to be undefined. Because at the moment, um, when you have 0 on your denominator, it's not going to have any value whatsoever. So we need to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation so that there is no HTM on its own in the denominator. We can't have a denominator of zero. So let's see what happens when we substitute in to this. So we are saying that the derivative is the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h. Now, this is a slightly trickier one than the one in example one. But the advice that I tend to give uh, for any function, especially more complex ones, is write out the function that you're given, f of x, where x appears, put a bracket instead of the x, like that. And inside the bracket, you're going to put x plus h, because instead of our input value being x, it's this extra value x plus h. So all we need to do is do that. And that gives us our function f of x plus h. We're subtracting from that the original function f of x. And because there's two terms in it, we've got an addition of terms. We need to remember to put that in a bracket because they're both being subtracted. And this is still all over h. It's a cracker. OK, so here we go. Uh, it, it looks a wee bit complex, but we can start to simplify it, first of all, by multiplying or squaring out that bracket, x plus h squared. And if I do that, I get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. We've still got our fraction 3 over x plus h. And if I multiply out this bracket by the negative 1, then I've got minus x squared and minus 3 over x, still all over h, which of course is still no good to me because if I set the value of h is 0, that whole fraction is still going to be undefined. The whole value is undefined. So we need to find ways to simplify it, but it looks a wee bit complex. Fortunately, we've got one wee thing we can do. We can simplify it by uh, putting together or removing the x squared terms. One is positive, one is negative, so they cancel out. And then I'm going to do something an interesting technique. I'm going to split the whole function up into two groups. I'm going to identify the terms that have an h in it, which would be able to cancel out with this h underneath. And so we've got two of these. The other two are uh, fractional terms, and we can treat these slightly differently. So because these two first terms have an h term, in other words, h is a common factor of them, I'm not going to do it just yet, but I'm going to choose these two to be in this fraction here. And I'm going to actually make a new uh, limit function here uh, with the other ones. Now, they've still got an we're dividing by h. Uh, but because there's already a fraction here, 3 over x plus h minus 3 over x, 
so there's not another fraction in that. I'm actually going to write the instead of dividing by h, multiplying by 1 over h, which is the kind of same thing. Okay, so I've split that up, and that's the reason why we're going to you're going to see now that there's a common factor of h. This first fraction is actually quite straightforward. Now we've got a common factor of h in the numerator. And that gives us that. h brackets 2x plus h all over h. You can see those h terms, common factors, and are going to cancel out, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And on the right hand side, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet because what I want to do is to, to rather than looking at these two fractions um, separately, I'm going to add them together. I need to find something to cancel out with this 1 over h because that 1 over h as a value doesn't exist. 1 over 0, I want to think about that as 1 over 0, and we can't. So we need to find a way of getting rid of it, cancelling it out or multiplying it through. And so what we do is we have a look at this fraction in the brackets. We're going to make a combined fraction with a denominator of x times x plus h. Okay? And because I've multiplied those two fractions together, then the quick method of finding the numerator says we're going to do x times 3 is 3x minus x plus h times 3 is 3 times x plus h. You do it whatever other way. If you have a different way of doing it, that's fine. But that's one quick way of working out our subtraction of fractions. So, next line. We're nearly there. Uh, remember, we're trying to work out the derivative. It's kind of lost up on top of the screen. Now, this is where we can start simplifying. In the first fraction, we can divide through by h, which means that the first expression just becomes 2x plus h. And the good news is I don't have h on the denominator of a fraction, therefore that actually has a value when h is 0. We're nearly there in the second expression because we've still got a 1 over h, but on the numerator here we've got 3x Minus here as well. I'll write it all out. We're going to multiply that second term by 3, and that's going to give me that. Now, if you notice the 3x and the minus 3x cancel out, and not only that, but yeah, let's leave it one more go. I'm just trying to take you through step by step. It's easy when you can see the answer, but I'm not going to leap into it going to keep writing out. So we've got 2x plus h plus the limit as h tends to 0 of 1 over h times negative 3h over... I'm going to square that. I'm just going to multiply that out because we're going to need to do that anyway. I'll show you why. So again, like we did in the first fraction, we can cancel out the h terms there because if we multiplied the 1 over h into that fraction, the h terms will be able to uh, disappear. Which means that I can write out one final limit statement that the derivative f dash x or x f prime x is the limit as h tends to 0 of 2x plus h. And then over here, we've got minus 3 over x squared plus x h. Again, we now don't have an h term alone on the denominator. We have an h in the denominator, but now what we're going to do is we are going to drop this limit expression here. So it's at the whole point, see this thing here? That's saying we are preparing ourselves to let h equal 0. We're, we're trying to get our h our expression to a point where we can drop 0 in instead of h, substitute in 0 instead of h. And now we can do that. And if we do that, if h goes to 0 here, and if h goes to 0 and substitute in, you notice that what we're left with is we've got our 2x. We don't have that term, next term here. And this fraction here 
the denominator just becomes x squared because x times 0 is 0, that second value is 0. So we're left with negative 3 over x squared. So the derivative is 2x minus 3 over x squared. That is the answer that we get by differentiation from first principles. You may already have thought, well, is that uh, what I would have got anyway? So the original function, if we remind ourselves, was f of x equals x squared uh, plus 3 over x, otherwise known as x squared plus 3 multiplied by x to the power negative 1. And if I were to di differentiate that using my shortcut rules of multiplying by the power and reducing the power by 1, I would have x squared would go to 2x. And the second term, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. x reduced negative 1 by 1 gives us negative 2, which is 2x minus 3 over x squared. So that's our check. Have we got the same answer? We surely have. Therefore, we have correctly discovered the derivative by first principles. That's a more extreme example where we're having to come up with a strategy to deal with fractions uh, within it. Uh, but you might come across some of these and it's worth having a, a plan. Okay, go back and try that again until you can see why. Keep working through the, the algebra of these examples. Try some of your own. And there's one other example, three, with uh, a trig function to see how you get on with these. Okay, good luck.